Hi. Any of those who is interested in Belarusian politics have noticed that in recent years the word extremism has steadily entered into political lexicon. We hear about extremist literature, extremist websites, extremist groups. But no one explains us anywhere what is extremism, why it should be avoided, why it should be punished. In this video I will answer the following questions. What is extremism in understanding of Belarusian state? What are the nuances of its usage in Belarusian context? And is it worth being extremist? The very first law on extremism was passed in a Belarusian parliament in December 2006, nine months after mass protest against the results of election. But we are interested in the last version of the law. In April 2016 it was changed, of course, in terms of more strictness. According to the law, extremism is activity of Belarusian citizens, foreign citizens or stateless persons or political parties or other private associations inherent to planning, organizing and performing actions aimed at. And then you can see the list of as many of 13 points. Among them, incitement of racial, national, religious and other social hatred, organization and exercising of mass disorders, hooligan actions and acts of vandalism motivated by racial, national, religious and other social hatred, political and ideological hatred, preventing a lawful activity of state institutions exercised by violence, threatening of violence, fraud, bribery, also the exercising of violence, of threatening by violence regarding relatives of official persons, aiming to prevent their lawful activity, or forcing them to change a type of their activity, or because of revenge for their official duties. And 10 more points of relatively the same content. Similarly, the definitions of extremist activity, extremist group and extremist materials are derived. According to the latest amendments in all administrative and criminal code, for distributing extremist material one can get up to 500 euro fine and for leading the extremist organization up to 10 years of prison. No one has been accused according to a criminal code yet, but during three years, according to human rights organizations, there were 11 administrative cases on Article 1711 of Administrative Code. Three of them were for reports on Contacta social network. There is even special Republican list of extremist materials created by the Ministry of Information. Anarchist materials are represented very widely, as well as plates, magnets and mysterious audio file 1962-96.0. MP3. Of course, you have certainly noticed a very vague formulas used in a law. You were distributing finding news about Central Election Committee preventing a lawful activity of state institutions exercised by fraud, blocked the door in an official building or dropped a banner on a fence of a police station. Why not call this an act of vandalism motivated by political hatred? You also know how our courts and prosecutors love to tweak wording. Let's remember those judged for hooliganism because of painting graffiti or participating in rallies. State media, in turn, do not hesitate to use as much dark colors as they can while speaking about extremism. But the entire image of a world is far from peace. People, strong economies, a sovereign state are dying. World experience of a fierce conflict, from mass disorders to creation of ISIS shows. Fire of war starts from the spark of extremism. That's why on a final session of a fifth calling, the first document in hands of the parliamentarians is an amendment to a law on combat extremism. Valery Vakulchik, a chief of KGB, recent law defines an organization as extremist only if it is registered officially, as practice show the highest threat is posed by a non-registered groups. Meanwhile, White Legion is an extremist pro-fascist organization. The United Database of Extremists and Terrorists of the Commonwealth of Independent States may be 
created this year. Books which are not recommended to read, not speaking about selling them. A Gubop operatives jointly with a state tax office have visited a shop where banned literature was offered, as well as selling books of extremist content. Booksellers have broken one more law, forgot to issue a check for commodity. Hiding your face on the meetings is prohibited also in USA, Sweden and Russia. Belarusian anarchists were reminded about this rule. Neither authority nor laws matters for them. Young people, instigated in an extremist way, have ignored the demands of police. That's why, after the end of a protest rally, police arrested them. A wave of violence broke out in Afghanistan. A military base on the southeast of the country was attacked by extremists. Modern extremism was born in a fertile soul of an ultras movement. And that is just a superficial digest. Let's analyze the details. First, the term extremism itself works as a bugaboo, a label. You just put this label on a person or a group and they're becoming outlaws. It's very useful. No one never is interested in details. Extremist means bad. Why bad? Because of what? It doesn't matter. Extremist is a terrorist, criminal, maniac. It works very well for a collective consciousness. The aim is to create negative association on an emotional level. Just pay attention. While defining extremism, all opposition forces are merged together. Reactive ones, progressive ones, radical ones, conservative ones. Jihadists from Afghanistan, Belarusian anarchists, ISIS members and football fans are rigged together by a giant scoop and labeled similarly. Though these movements are often absolutely contradictive in ideology, aims and worldview, but law equates race hatred to any social hatred. Though I think you will agree that killing people for color of skin and saying down with anti-people authority is completely different things. In the same time, laws and state media represent it to us as the same actions. It is made for intentional lowering of an education level of a population. They do not want people to know who is who. They do not want people to see the differences between cutthroats and radical youth. Because where you see explanations, you later may yield interest and curiosity. Propagandists cannot let this happen. One more important thing. Extremists themselves in any broadcastings, reports and talk shows about extremism are never given a single word. Of course, it is made not to give an alternative opinion a single chance. But the deep reason is state diffidence in its own political paradigm, in a power of their discourse. They understand that their system of values is very weak. Many follow it only by inertia, just because they do not know any other. It may seem that if all the extremists are such a freaks and featherheads, just call any extremist to a TV show, let him speak, and then destroy his arguments by logic. Take an interview with him, and then show the facts where he lies, shows himself as a hypocrite and does not watch his words. But they cannot do this, because even the pieces of uncontrolled words are dangerous for them. The reason is, as I mentioned before, an absence of an explicit ideology within the state. A radical idea is almost always an idea of change, or if we speak about anarchism, about abolition of establishment and bosses. It is deprivation of privileges for a certain extra small group of populations, which captured social resources and power. So this extra small minority is interested in not letting these ideas circulate within the society. We see simple economic and political interest here. So, as I have said, the general aim of both law and extremism and propaganda in media is to put the entire range of ideas outside the common sense and power of reason, and in particular, anarchism. According to this law, any idea which implies that our bosses should be overthrown is extremist. Such an idea is placed in the same row with misanthropic ideas, racism and murders. Now what we have to understand, as state is concerned that thoughts about changes, not only radical ones, but any changes, will never appear in our heads, we should expect that the sphere of extremism to grow all the time. 
Now extremists are Nazi, anarchists and Antifa. Tomorrow we should expect much more groups there, such as participators of the liberal opposition, who are the most radical in their rhetorics, members of non-traditional religious confessions, Protestants are already persecuted in Belarus, football fans, they are almost recorded as extremists, members of LGBT, any mere fans. I have already read some state propagandists who assert that anime is a hostile propaganda, and so on and so forth. And, of course, authorities will apologize it all by social security, concern about rights and the interests of citizens, avoiding the bloody terrorist attacks, mass murders and street rapes, and so on and so forth. Here, by the way, propagandists show plainly marvelous hypocrisy. Here is the graphic statistics. How much people during year 2015 died from death penalty? Basically, people killed directly by the state. Two persons. Occupational fatality. 75 people. Car accidents. 858 people. Died from poisoning alcohol. 1,394 people. Committed suicide. 1,717 people. And how many people were killed by extremists? Hey, Vakulchik, Shunevich. How many people were killed by extremists? Zero. How many special vehicles, by the way, the Ministry of Internal Affairs have bought to prevent suicides? Or how many amendments to a criminal code did KGB forced for Belarusians to stop them dying from because of counterfeit alcohol? They do not do anything for our lives, but they do everything for controlling us and take the money for doing it from our pockets. What we all should do. First of all, all of us who think independently should recognize the very thought about banning thoughts and information is absurd and violates literally all laws. It prevents person from developing and society from progressing. So if prison is a violence against body, laws on extremism is a violence against reason and thoughts. We are not children and we know ourselves, what we can read and what we can believe in. No one has a right to decide what information we can consume and what we cannot, and we did not give anyone such a right. But as long as the attack of our rights will continue, we should resist, and in some sense we all must become extremists, because state will have no enough control for anyone, that's axiom. What can we do? First of all, we should read, watch and say everything we want. At the moment, when you have started to act with regard to them, they have already defeated you. Do not give them authority on your thoughts and wills. Secondly, distribute freely everything you want. Modern tools of anonymization let you do that almost without any danger. At third and the foremost, we should build such kind of society where no one will have even theoretical possibility to question our rights and freedoms. But that's a long and assiduous work. How should we do that is going to be described in our further videos. Subscribe to my pages in social media and to this channel. Well then, this is Mikola Didok. I wish you all the best in the critical thinking.